Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a huge storm that is coming to the United States over the next three days. And this storm is going to bring some significant severe weather anywhere from the Midwest all the way back through the Southern Plains between today all the way through Thursday. We'll also be breaking down a large cold blast that'll be coming to the United States just in time for this weekend. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin first with what's happening right now in the United States today and we will begin with the Great Plains and this is an area that is going to become very active over the next 48 hours but for the time being it is actually quite quiet across many areas. Notice right now we do have some cloud cover stretching anywhere from the Central Plains back into Texas but it's pretty isolated overall and this is going to develop more though as we go into tonight because there will at least be a conditional risk for severe weather tonight in areas like eastern Kansas and as well as back into Missouri so things are going to get quite interesting over there as we go into tonight but what we're really going to be watching for is this large storm activity back over on the west coast and once this begins to ramp up as we go into tonight and as well as into tomorrow this low pressure system will intensify it'll organize more and that is when we're going to have a much more active threat of severe weather for both Wednesday and Thursday across much of the Great Plains Midwest and even the lower Mississippi Valley so it's going to get pretty active as we go into Wednesday and Thursday and I do want to mention the east coast it's very dry right now it's really the driest it has been in quite a while it's going to stay like that for the next few days and then eventually as that storm that's coming out of the pacific ocean moves to the east we will eventually get some of those impacts across the east coast of the country so more details on that later in this forecast all right let's talk more about that severe weather potential for the next few days and we're going to go day by day because there is a risk between now and as well as thursday so we have three days of severe weather ahead we will begin with tuesday which is tossing trampolines on tacos tuesday we do currently have a marginal threat of severe weather that includes areas in northern Missouri, back into southeast Kansas, and a very small quadrant there of northeast parts of Oklahoma. Now, this is a conditional risk, meaning we may or may not see severe weather, but the main concern, if storms fire up tonight, will be some damaging winds and perhaps a little bit of large hail. Now, once we go into uh, Wednesday, which is Wacky Weather Wednesday, that threat of severe weather will increase, and I actually would not be surprised if we had an enhanced risk if this threat starts to become a bit more materialized and if there's more confidence here. But right now, there is a slight risk of severe weather this does include areas near kansas city and back into southeast parts of nebraska northeast kansas and western missouri there's also a marginal threat of severe weather which goes all the way down into northeast texas and as well as southwest parts of iowa now the main concern for this event will be damaging winds and large hail but, but there is an increased risk for tornadoes out of this particular event and that's primarily going to be near kansas city and there is a chance that we go live for this tomorrow night so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel down below uh, because there is going to be a potential for a few tornadoes here across areas near Kansas City if this event all becomes organized and if we end up seeing some convection develop which is what we're going to talk about here in just a couple of minutes on the future radar once we go into Thursday which is tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday we have a much larger risk of severe weather this is a very large area anywhere from the Midwest back into Texas and there is a very good chance that we see at least a small enhanced risk of severe weather back down in North Texas in the next outlook but for the time being very large slight risk of severe severe weather from about the Chicago suburbs all the way back into DFW and back even into Waco, Texas. Uh, the main concern as we go into Thursday will be damaging winds and large hail across this entire area. I would say that there's going to be at least some sort of risk of damaging winds, maybe a little bit higher across areas in southeast Iowa, back into western Illinois, and there might be a localized slightly higher tornado risk in a couple areas here in western Illinois and eastern Iowa, so keep that in mind. In addition to that, there also could be another localized higher tornado risk somewhere we're over in northeast Texas, perhaps into southeast Oklahoma. We'll be monitoring that very closely as well for you. Now, this particular severe weather setup is actually quite interesting. The dew points are going to be surging out of the Gulf of Mexico. Notice these dew points really starting to crank up into the 60s and even low 70s back down in areas like Texas and down near the Gulf Coast as we go into Wednesday night. But it comes, becomes more impressive as we go into Thursday. Notice back up in like the Midwest, for example, we're going to have dew points into the mid to upper 50s and low 60s. And this will increase that severe weather risk risk across areas in the Midwest as we go into late Thursday. By Friday into Saturday, those dew points all fall down to the south, and one of the big reasons why is because of this large low pressure system that is eventually going to be coming out of Canada, and this is going to usher in a ton of colder weather, and we'll be talking about that later in this forecast. But let's get back to that severe weather potential. A little bit more on the setup. We have a lot of instability in this environment. Notice as we go into Thursday morning, instability is going to be growing across the southern plains especially. Notice many of these areas, including Texas, with 
with instability values as high as 3,000 joules per kilogram. And what that means is that there is a lot of fuel in the atmosphere for there to be severe weather. So we have a pretty prime setup down in the southern plains and even back into the Midwest, we don't need that much instability for there to be severe weather. And we will have plenty of instability even in the Midwest with values as high as 2,000 joules per kilogram, which again will be favorable during the morning and as well as the afternoon hours Thursday across those areas. So that's what we're looking at in terms of the setup. Now let's talk more about the severe weather timing across these areas and we will begin first with the central plain. So going into tonight, there will be a few thunderstorms across Missouri. Again, it's a very conditional risk of severe weather. I'm not really expecting much when it comes to severe weather. Maybe some isolated damaging winds, maybe some pocket change size tail, but that's about it. Once we go into Wednesday morning, things relatively dry across the entire central plains. But once we go into the evening hours, specifically after sunset, so close to about eight to nine o'clock, what we're going to what we're going to have to watch for is this cluster of storms to develop off of this low pressure system. And your low pressure system will be centered across central Kansas. That's going to kind of create this little spin arc that you're going to see here on the future radar. And that could lead to a few tornadoes embedded in some of these supercells that develop in the evening. This is around eight to nine o'clock. Notice storms moving across areas near Kansas City, uh, just north of there. That is where the greatest tornado risk will lie is in this area here. And that is where you're definitely going to want to make sure that you have a tornado action plan in place and multiple ways to receive alerts because that, in my opinion, is the most concerning area going into Wednesday evening between about 7 o'clock to about midnight or so going into tomorrow night. And again, we'll probably go live for this, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Once we go into early Thursday morning, this all turns into a cluster of storms, and that will eventually lead to a primary threat of damaging winds across areas in eastern Iowa and as well as back into Illinois. And that will be what we're going to be watching for going into Thursday morning. And to look at that more closely, here's the European model. Notice as we go into the morning, storms going towards Chicago. Main concern will be damaging winds. Once we go into the afternoon and evening, we'll be watching for more storms to fire off, and these ones will also be capable of some level of damaging winds and hail. There also will be an isolated tornado risk associated with those. Eventually, by about 9 o'clock or so, the severe weather threat is basically done across the Midwest. So that is primarily a morning threat into the afternoon. That's the main time frame to watch for. Back down in the southern plains going into Thursday, things relatively quiet during the morning. Storms will fire up during the early to mid-afternoon hours, and these will pose all modes of severe weather, including the threat of damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes. By the evening, storms continue to move to the east, and we'll be watching for more storms to develop even after sunset. So this means the potential for two rounds of storms will exist. And then once we go into Friday morning, those storms move down to the south and east with mainly damaging winds closer to the Gulf Coast of the United States. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that there is a large cold blast coming to the country as we go into this weekend. Notice well above average temperatures for much of the country all the way through Saturday. But once we go into Sunday into Monday, we are going to get some Arctic air coming out of Canada. And what I mean by Arctic is not the Arctic that we saw in January since we are now in March. The weather is definitely going to be a bit warmer than overall what we saw in January, but there will be some cold air across areas in the Midwest and eventually going toward the East Coast as we go into Tuesday. And that's a large cold air mass, which means that temperatures are going to drop quite a bit. Many areas in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley will be dropping into the teens and 20s for low temperatures as we go into Tuesday morning. So we are not done with winter yet. One more shot of it, at least before the end of winter is here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.